Okay. We know what a, while, a do while loop is. Now we're going to look at what a do until loop is. So I'm just going to copy this bit of code here. Um, I'm just going to copy this code, this test do while. And I'm going to change the test do while to the test do until. So now we're going to test a do until loop. And the look of a do until loop looks very similar to a do while loop, only instead of right instead of having the keyword while in it, it has the keyword until in it. So a do until uh, this loop it loops until condition is true and our condition let's say do until range a1 dot value is uh, less than 124 well we could leave that condition there um, so if I run this again we clear the contents of the sheet and if I just run it look what happened uh, it fell, it evaluated this line of code, range a1.value. Is it less than 124? Well, that's true. And since the condition is true, it, it's going to loop until that, and then it's going to stop looping. So it loops until something is true versus looping while something is true. There's a difference here. So this down here, just to be clear, uh, loops while condition is true. And you just saw what the difference is. When I run it, this condition is the value less than 124. It evaluates the true. So while that condition is true, it's going to execute the code. And so it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep looping in, that, in the while case 124 times. But until it's true, meaning it is true already, right? So there's nothing in it. It's less than, nothing is less than 124, so it's not going to execute the code. Um, if we wanted to loop, use a do until loop to get the value 124 in here, all we'd have to do is do this. Uh, do until that value, whatever's in there, is greater than 124. So now if I run it, I get 125, actually. Um, it should be greater than or equal to 124. So if I run it now, I get 124. So I just wanted to show you um, how to get how to get how to get the exact same output using the do until and the do while. You know, if you run this down here. Uh, if I run this, you get 124. And if you run it up here, you got 124, but you had to change the relational operator. And we also changed the while to until. Because this is going to uh, check this condition. And if it's true, it's going to stop. Whereas down here, it's going to check this condition. And if it's true, it's going to keep going. So that's why you got to change the less than to the greater than or equal to, and then it'll work fine. That is all a do until does. It's, it uh, loops, and it, it executes this line of code until this condition is true. And if it's true, um, so right now, if we run it, look, it has the value 124 in it. Um, if I comment this clearing out so that we go down to it, it's it's evaluating this this uh, value here, 124. Is 124 greater than or equal to uh, 124? And the answer is yes. It's true, so it's gonna it's not gonna go into the code. Uh, that's all a do until does. It loops until something is true, 
And it could be that the first time you run it, the condition is true. In the same way that we were able to uh, move this bit of code here, the this bit of code down to the bottom, we could do the same thing with the uh, with the until. And again, the reason you would do that is that the first time through the loop, you want to execute this code no matter what. So that's all moving it down here does is that right now if I run this, watch what happens, I'm going to execute this code. I'm not going to check any conditions. I'm not going to evaluate anything. I'm just going to run the code and now I get 125 here. And then I start evaluating conditions and I drop out of the loop. So moving the, again, moving this part of the code to the bottom makes the code run the first time no matter what without checking any conditions and that's the advantage sometimes that's an advantage most times like I said in the other video you can just leave that part of the code the until and then the condition to check you can leave it at the top because most times you're gonna want to check the condition first so that's all a do until loop is it loops until a condition is true and people sometimes get the do until loops confused with the do while loops but you you really have to think about what they do you know this one loops until the condition is true whereas this one it's gonna loop while a condition is true so so that's 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 the only difference is when do they run and when do they not run and what what's gonna make this stop and what's gonna make that stop well this loop will stop when this condition is true I guess you could you could say it this way stops when condition is true versus this loop stops when the condition is false So that's the difference. I mean, these aren't confusing concepts. They're just a little bit subtle in the sense that you have to know when these loops are going to run and when they're not going to run. And you could choose to use either one. Though You could structure these in ways to do the same thing like we saw. We had 124 using a do until and 124 using a do while. It's up to you which loop type you want to use, a do while or a do until. Um, you just got to know what to put for your condition, right? Because this do while is going to stop when this condition is false. So, for instance, in this case, do while range a one dot value is less than 124. Well, right now we have 125 in that. So if I don't clear it out like this, and I step through this, that condition is false, and so it's just going to go to the end. It's going to go to whatever whatever's next. It's not going to execute. And up here. Uh, 125 greater than or equal to this is also going to stop because that condition is true so those are the main differences is when does this stop this stops when this condition is true this loop stops when that condition is true whatever you put in it and this stops when the condition is false so you have to maneuver really these relational operators notice down here is less than up here is greater than or equal to you just maneuver these around and you'll get the same result but you need to play around with this a little bit to get to get your head around it but you have this workbook uh, you can step through it you can walk through all this stuff okay so in the next uh, part I'm going to do some examples using these loops and some useful examples to help you get your head around it and a practical example of deleting deleting blank rows and things like that. Okay.